Hey everybody, this is Hogan Brown from Loon Outdoors, and today I'm going to show you how to tie Hogan's simple crippled caddis. I spent a lot of time fishing my home waters of the lower Yuba River, and while Northern California is not known for its dry fly fishing, we do have a fair amount of caddis hatches on this river that, as a guide or an angler, you got to come prepared for. So when I'm tying a dry fly, I tend to try to create patterns that serve a lot of different purposes. I can't come with boxes upon boxes of every stage of caddis because we just don't fish enough caddis hatches to justify designating that much space in my pack or even in my boat bag when I'm in the drift boat. So this fly, Hogan's Crippled Caddis, is kind of a similar way or an easy way to kill a lot of birds with one stone, so to say. So what I've done is create a, a caddis pattern that'll fish as an emerger, a cripple, a egg layer, all sorts of those stages where that caddis is going to be low on the water and trout are going to key on maybe an opportunistic meal. There's a lot of CDC in that underwing to keep it floating. There's a bit of foam in the front to keep that front high. And then I use Antron and actually nymph dubbing for the back of the fly, which is then going to soak water and kind of ride a little bit lower. I like a really low profile caddis pattern, whether it's a cripple, an emerger, or even a caddis just sitting on the surface. So let's get started. All right, first part of this fly is gonna be the hook. We fish, or I use for this one, the Eric's FW501, this basic dry fly hook. I fish it mainly in a 14, but you can go up to a 12 or a 16. I'm gonna start with my 50D Vivas GSP and just work that thread down the hook shank to the back. Now again, with any of my patterns, as I always say, you can tie this in any color that fits your hatch or your river or lake. But for me, I'm going to use this light sparkle antron for a shuck. I'm going to pull a small little piece off. And one thing I do do is I tie it right in to the hook shank. Tie it right on top to give that full bodied look. Going to keep a consistent size. And one thing I'll do is I'll stop it right where I want to start the next part of the fly. Okay, so it helps me keep my proportions visually referenced throughout tying the fly. Because a lot of us, as we go through this, tend to overdress or push our hair wing forward. This is going to be a nice hair wing fly. And one thing I personally usually do not do is save myself enough room for that hair wing. For this dubbing, I'm going to use Caddis Nymph Pale Olive. Spirit River UV2 dubbing. Now this is a nymph dub, right? So this is gonna absorb water. And one thing that I do with this fly is I like, I, I will use this dubbing that absorbs water to keep that back end of the fly down a little bit. If I wanna tweak how it sits, I'll dress that antron with some aquel to keep it a little higher. And I do create a nice taper and come up right to where that antron was tied in. I'll trim any of the little guard hairs, get them out of the way. So once we've dubbed up to about, I, I kind of think about halfway, that's what I shoot for because I tend to overcrowd my the front of my fly. I'm gonna take the first insertion of some CDC. This is just natural done. I'm gonna take a feather like this and I'm not an artist when it comes to CDC or dry flies, so I kind of just lay it in there, give it a nice little tuft, trim the excess, and leave it. Next, I'm gonna take a piece of razor foam, this nice thin foam. I cut a nice thin piece. And again, you can mix up colors on this. If you want to do some like chartreuse or a hot spot in here using this foam, it's a great thing to do. I'm just going to palmer this around. Then 
tape it off. Give it a nice little taper with that foam. Trim it. Then I'm gonna take another CDC feather. And with this one, it's a little bigger. So what I do is I go in here and I cut that tip off. Then I take the rest of it, pull it forward, set it right on top, give it just another layer. Then I'm going to take some bleached Elcare, just a natural patch trim off and again with the L care this is one thing I have to personally remember or remind myself less is more so I'm going to cut off a nice patch filter out some of the stray fibers stick the clump in my Zippo hair stacker even them out Nice thing about this, I can see how it looks through the window. If it looks good, I open it up. Those tips are nice and even, grab them by the tips. Give it a few little pulls. Look at it, set it right even with the CDC. The pull, pull out the excess fuzz, pull a little bit forward, give it another tighten pull. With this GSP, be careful not to pull too tight or you're gonna cut right through those fibers, but you want a nice splay. Do it about two to three times, come forward and tie off. Making sure not to get those fibers in there. Though as I always say, if a fish's decision to eat my fly comes down to that level of perfection. I've usually done a lot of things right. <laughs> Take those tips forward. Trim. And one thing I like to do with any of my caddis is I like to keep a little bit bushier of a head or ends of elk hair. Because what that's going to allow me to do is if I choose to, I can just dress that tip and not the wings or anything back here to get a little even a lower or more of an emerger. Or I can come in here and cut that elk care wing, leave the CDC and dress those longer tips to get almost a cantilever down in the water, almost a merger style. If you want to fish it as like maybe even a mayfly or a uh, emerging caddis. Then I'm gonna trim that antron and I kinda of just get a little haphazard with it. You don't want it to look just too uniform. You got Hogan's Crippled Caddis. Pretty versatile, easy to see, and useful on many Western strains with caddis hatches.